All right, Minnesotans have been waiting for it all summer. Opening day at the State Fair. From food on a stick to big acts at the grandstand like Nickelback, there's something for everyone over the next 12 days. Mary McGuire live at the fairgrounds. The gates just opened about seven and a half minutes ago. Mary, it's a pretty cool moment, isn't it? It is a very cool moment. People were racing in. People were lined up so early this morning. And I swear, I have never had so much fried food before 7 a.m. in my life. I'm here with Sarah from Sarah's Tipsy Pies. Explain, you have some new pies uh, to show off at the fair this year. I do. So we made a savory pie. It's our first savory pie. It's an onion and gouda pie made with Chestnut Hill from Liftbridge. Liftbridge was our first uh, alcohol that we ever used. Uh, it has a nice sugar onion topping and then a beer glaze. And then our newest partner is Fulton, and it's a chocolate satin stout. It's made with peace, war and peace. So uh, it also has a, a raspberry glaze on top. Fantastic. Love incorporating some Minnesota ingredients uh, into your product. And you were saying that there's such a camaraderie between uh, the people who have food booths here at the fair. Can you explain that? Yeah, well, I'm a, still kind of a new vendor. I'm, this is my third year, and I'm still learning. And everybody has just really kind of uh, helped me learn the ways. and. You know, giving me the advice that you need to succeed here because it's just a different way of doing business. So I'm very thankful for the friends I've made here and it's nice to see them. It's exciting. Minnesota nice to say the least. Thank you so much for uh, waking up early with us. And like uh, I mentioned, the gates opened up, but people were lined up very early. I spoke with one man. He was here at 1 24 this morning. He's not even originally from Minnesota, but he has fully embraced this tradition. A lot of different things to do. You watch a small Minnesota town become a teeming metropolis. It's like a Midwest Brigadoon. 12 days of peace, love, and cheese curds. Peace, love, and cheese curds. It just doesn't get much better, better than that, guys. I think that that actually might be a tattoo that one of the Nickelback members has, right? Yeah, peace, love, and cheese curds. Oh, man, Brian. This is not Brian's first rodeo being first through uh, first through the gates, uh, is it, Mary? No, this is a tradition for him. Uh, I believe he said he's been the first in line for the past three years, and he has kind of a competition uh, that he has uh, between some folks. And he'll get here a little bit early one year. Someone else will get up a little bit early uh, one year. So it's just it's so fun. Folks are enjoying the fair right now, bright and early. All right, I'll be out there in a couple hours. Look forward to it, Mary. Thank you. When you visit the fair, come on by and say. Hi, we are broadcasting live at the corner of Carnes Avenue and Nelson at noon, four, five, six, and ten. And at nine, I will be at one of the new exhibits at the fair. Can't tell you where yet, but come and find me. Inside the CCO booth, you get the chance to become the news anchor, reporter, meteorologist, and your very own newscast. Uh, some of us from the CCO news team will pop in. Maybe give you a hand. Maybe you can show us how it's done. And then we upload your videos right to YouTube so you can share those with your family and friends later. And just for showing off your skills, you get to take home this WCCO toy microphone. All right, you might have been about 40 minutes now since the gates opened at the Minnesota State Fair. It may be early, but that did not stop some people from lining up to be the first inside. That's where we find Mary McGuire live this morning. Hi, Mary. Hey, good morning to you guys. Well, it's time to grab your Pepto-Bismol, your stretchy pants, and your fanny pack. It is state fair time. The gates are open, and people are ready to eat, of course. Food is one of the favorite things at the Minnesota State Fair. I'm here with Melissa Gasick from the Hideaway Speakeasy. Good morning. Good morning. What do you have here? This is a new food. This is a new food. Um, we have a specialty drink as well. Um, so the fall guy breakfast sandwich is capicola ham, uh, melty white cheddar. It's served on a fresh ciabatta roll with scrambled egg. Very nice. And then I see you have some Minnesota made wine from the Cannon River Winery. Yes, this is cotton candy bubble trouble sparkling Edelweiss wine. Um, and we pour it over fresh spun pink cotton candy from the State Fair. That is fantastic. Nothing says the State Fair quite like some cotton candy. Um, are you new to the fair and where can people find you? Yeah, so the Hideaway Speakeasy is a new 1920s throwback prohibition theme um, venue. It's in the upper grandstand, the west side of the of the grandstand in the new veranda area. So. Fantastic. Well, there. Yes, well, congratulations and uh, happy fair day. Of course, the food isn't the only new thing here at the Minnesota State Fair this year. There's going to be a gigantic Ferris wheel. Check this out. It is the tallest traveling Ferris wheel in North America. It stands at 156 feet tall. It carries riders 15 stories high, showing off fantastic views of the fair and the Twin Cities. It costs five bucks per riders and is open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. daily. Also, 
also new this year is the Great Minnesota Knit Together. That's Minnesota's largest yarn bomb. If you aren't familiar with what the heck a yarn bomb is, let me explain. It's a form of street art featuring crocheted, knitted, and other crafted yarn creations, and it will blanket topiaries on the grandstand ramp. Artists from across the state and the country have sent the fair dozens of pieces to be added to the community yarn bomb. Now, Jason, I've done some fact checking. And you can actually get pig ears at the dairy barn. You, you can. can. You can. Because Jason they give them called out there. you out. He didn't think that he thought I was just, to go to the I was pig curious. Barn. It didn't make any sense. I'm still nursing that sick burn that uh, Jason. It's just a question. It was just a question. Jason caused. Uh, he tried to call earlier, you out, but yes, Larry, I did. And he was wrong. I did check, yeah. and that it, you can get those pig ears at the dairy barn. All right. So we, we're all about uh, we're all about Very correct good. facts here on uh, CCO. I, I apologize. <laughs> I feel terrible. I will, it's okay, Jason. I'll publish a full retraction online, and you know I'll probably have to turn in my my microphone. I think today. you I think you need to post a picture of yourself in pig ears. All right. I think that you should that just come out happen. here, Jason, and we can just uh, sort this out over a corn dog. Sounds good. All right, I'll be out there in about an hour and a half. So wait for me. Thanks, Fantastic. <laughs> All right, well, the fair has a new Princess K of the Milky Way. Check this out. Emily Anikstad was crowned at the fairgrounds last night. For the next year, the 19 year old college student from St. Peter serves as the Minnesota Dairy Industries Goodwill Ambassador. But let's face it, one of her first duties might be the coolest. Literally, she'll get to sit in a cooler while her likeness is sculpted in a giant block of butter. Congratulations mm -hmm. to Emily.